the session. So before we actually uh, start off with the portfolio analysis process, there is a concept which drives the world of portfolio management which is called as a mean variance analysis. As we are very clearly understanding, finding out the mean of the securities and the variance of the securities plays a very key role in the portfolio management process. So any security we are looking at, computing the mean returns of it, computing the variance of returns for it and of course along with that the covariance and correlation. So when I am able to do these kind of calculations for individual securities as well as between the pairs of securities, I can do a better portfolio management. That is what is the base of this mean variance analysis wherein it makes a it makes a conclusion saying the risk versus the return people can compute the return vis-a-vis -vis the risk based on the expected returns of the securities as well as the variance of returns of the securities along with that they try to find out the correlation uh, and from there the covariance between the individual securities between the pairs of individual securities and this helps them in creating the portfolios that is what is the base for mean variance analysis which has given a, a, a starting point to the world of portfolio management or to the uh, to the world of creation of portfolios and some of the major assumptions that are built into this model are one all in investors are risk averse means unless unless there is a compensating return no investor wants to take a higher risk it doesn't mean that uh, all of them are low risk taking but a, 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 an investor might go for higher risk only if he is uh, only if he knows that there is a possibility i'm not talking about a guarantee only if he knows that there is a possibility of getting a higher return so only when he thinks that the expected return is going to be high then only there is a motivation for taking a high risk. So that is uh, one major assumption underlying this mean variance analysis framework and people can compute all these values. Everyone can compute the mean of each of the securities, the standard deviations the variance or even the covariance of all the pairs of securities quite comfortably and they base their decisions purely on this means most of the investors are rational enough they can do appropriate calculations and based on this calculations they can take their investment decisions and of course we as most of the models we have seen even this model goes with an assumption that there are no taxes and transaction costs. So typically uh, buying and selling can happen in unlimited uh, amounts uh, and people can create uh, their own uh, home driven kind of portfolios also because of this reason. Now, when we are looking at a portfolio containing only two assets what we are looking at is the expected return of the portfolio is simply the weighted average of the individual returns whereas when it comes to the variance it's simply not the weighted average it even contains a covariance term between them and this covariance term is what is the basis for 
portfolio management or reduction of the overall risk reduction of the overall risk by combination rather than the simple summation of the individual risk or simple weighted average of the individual risk so in a way it is uh, it it is uh, simply saying that when i am combining two securities x and y in some proportion let's say some 30% 70% so means i am i am investing 30% of my money in x and 70% in y so the expected return of the portfolio will definitely fall in between the expected returns of x and y definitely fall whatever is the combination we are choosing the expected return of the portfolio will definitely fall between x and y so returns whereas when i am looking at the variance of the returns it cannot be more than the highest variance but it can definitely be lower than the lowest variance out of the two i can combine <coughs> the two securities in such a way probably the 30 70 or some other uh, combination it can pull down the total variance below the lowest of the two below the minimum of the two whereas uh, the total uh, return the expected return of the portfolio will always lie in between the two that is the base of portfolio management wherein this is also giving me a conclusion that by small compromise on the return we can reduce the risk drastically by doing an optimal combination uh, of investment in the securities so that is how we get into so that's that's what can be found out using the covariance which is again based on the correlation between the two securities so we all uh, know that the covariance uh, between the two securities is nothing but the correlation between the two multiplied by their individual standard deviations so the if the correlation is very much positive like close to plus 1 then the portfolio is not effective but if the correlation goes away from plus 1 probably reaches very close to minus 1 the variant the risk of the portfolio comes down drastically which is what can create a kind of a diversification benefit for us this is what we'll see now and the same thing can be applied to a three asset portfolio when i talk about uh, the expected return the expected return in case of a three asset portfolio goes like w1 r1 plus w2 r2 plus w3 r3 whereas when it comes to the variance w1 squared sigma 1 squared so individual uh, individual uh, variances the square of their weightages w3 squared sigma 3 squared now pairwise covariance 2 w1 w2 covariance between 1 and 2 2 w2 w3 covariance between 2 and 3 plus 2 w1 w3 covariance between 1 and 3 so this is what will become the variance of the portfolio in case of three assets now let's take a one simple uh, example to try to uh, find out the correlation uh, using the correlation how do i find out uh, the mean and the variance of the portfolio right okay like i have taken a very simple uh, scenario saying the the expected return of the first security is 10% whereas the for r2 it is 20 so the return wise the second one is giving a more return compared to the first 
but it is more risky also compared to the first because the expected risk the standard deviation in the first case is 15 whereas in the second case it is 25 and I am expecting that the correlation between the two securities is 0.5 so when the correlation is 0.5 I can find out the covariance between them which is nothing but the correlation multiplied by the standard deviations of the individual securities so the covariance is coming out to this number and in some cases I require the variance also so I'll also compute the variance of one which is nothing but the square of the standard deviation and similarly the variance of the second is also the variance of the second one is the square of this standard deviation so let me use these two numbers also so that I can use at some point now I am expecting that I will invest some W1 in the first one and the remaining I will invest in the second so probably uh, here W2 I will call it but it would be 1 minus W1 so I will take some scenarios if I am investing 0% here then it is as good as saying I am investing 100% here so similarly I will uh, take 10% right like that I will uh, do 0% 10% and let me take this up to 100% and uh, based on this even this will become 1090 so here I want to find out the expected return in each of the cases so the expected return of this combination is w1 r1 plus w2 r2 w1 r1 plus w2 r2 so for this combination the expected return is coming out to be 20 percent similarly i can do for all of them so i could see that the expected return is always lying between the minimum return and the maximum return whereas if I want to try to find out the variance of the portfolio w1 squared uh, sigma 1 squared okay so w1 squared sigma 1 squared is the variance of 1 plus w2 squared variance of 2 plus 2 w1 w2 covariance between 1 and 2 so this is what is coming out as the variance of the portfolio so this is what is the variance of the portfolio now you see here the minimum of the two variances is 0.0225 whereas if you see here I am able to create a portfolio with 0.0222 variance which is lesser than the minimum of the two right I am able to create a portfolio with a variance of 0.0222 <coughs> like this so what we are saying but the return is not lesser than the two but the risk I am able to reduce it much lesser than the individual risk of the two securities taken together right uh, lesser it, it lesser than the minimum of the individual risk that is what we are trying to drive as the benefit of the portfolio management now when I try to plot okay now that I know the variance I'll take the standard deviation which is 